ask your neighbor, what are you going to do about between 10,000? I mean, as a person, I mean, are you living here not caring about this vision? You mean it doesn't concern you? Find the person who is saying that it doesn't concern me and let's find, let, let's. Is there anybody here who is concerned that a vision like this must be accomplished? Can I see the hand of that young boy? That pastor? Yes. Everybody has a share in this. I was talking to somebody who was saying that he had some stocks. You know stocks. You are in America. Stocks. What is stocks? What? Security. Securities. Like padlocks and doors or what? What is that? Financial securities. The doors to the banks. Oh, investments. Ah, that's securities. Stocks. He said he had some stocks and the stocks fell. You understand what it means? That is the value of the investment. Bad, 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 bad. Bad, 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 bad. What are some of the stocks? You know, you should educate me. Apples. Apples. Bananas. Apples. Apples. Oh, iPad. iPad. Oh, okay. iPad, apples. Okay. And what else? Walmart. Walmart. What else? Google. Google. Facebook. Okay. One more. Microsoft. YouTube. So all these are securities or stocks. Okay. So you understand when the brother says that the stocks fail. It means, it, it means what? Bad, bad, bad. So the money that was, let's say, $20 fell to what? Like what? $10 or $2. Is it a good thing, by the way? Is it a good thing? That's bad, 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 bad. Does anybody know of any stock which fell some time ago? Some stock. Or you yourself, your own stocks fell. It will not happen to you. But I'm here to announce to you a proper stock that will never fall in value. That if you are a shareholder of this one, it is more powerful than apples and bananas. Do you want to know that stock? Vision 10,000. I know for sure that there are pastors going to come out of this vision. People are going to become shepherds from this vision. People are going to have big churches from this vision. There are branches we know to have 20 members and 60 members. Because of this vision, you will have 800 members. You are renting a new hall, pastor. I said, pastor, you are renting a new hall. I said, you are renting a new hall. I said, you are renting a new hall. And you will rent another new hall. A new hall. Receive it in Jesus' name. Yes. You will buy more chairs. You will put pressure on Bishop Joel to deliver 200 chairs. The era where you counted your members in tens. It's over. I said it's over. I said it's over. I said it's over. Because our father has given us a better vision. Make sure you don't destroy this. Make sure. Make sure. And you will destroy it in your own life because the person standing by you will not destroy it. You will destroy it. And when you destroy this vision, you will perish. It means you are without a vision. You know, our father cannot come here with this anointing, give you a vision, 
and you just with the wave of a hand dismiss it. You will not dismiss it. How many of you are embracing this vision? Yes. Fully. And I'm saying that that is the point. That is where blessings you never expected will be delivered to you. You know, I was excited when he said that the fish Jesus sent the disciples to catch had a coin inside the world, the mouth, the mouth. There are people looking for coins and never find the coins. And there's someone also looking for fish, a fisher of men. The next fish you catch will have within its mouth that coin you are looking for. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Yes. Some have to go to school to find that coin. As for us, God will make us shepherds to find that coin. I said, God will make us shepherds to find that coin. I said, God will make us shepherds to find that coin. That's why people are very surprised though, that a pastor will, will be driving a nice car. Yeah. Or, 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 or a pastor will have nice children. Or a lady pastor will have a handsome husband. They can't handle it. They can't handle it. Now listen, 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 listen very carefully. The blessings which have been spoken on us, to us and over us, are not light blessings. But there are some people who are going to live here and not give the proper respect we must give to this work. That is why (laughs) from here, you must not join people who are not serious about soul winning. I'm telling you. Because based on a type of friend you have, you can have certain problems in your life. So this camp may easily mark the separation of friends. Easily of low certain people of your life. Yes. You've been friends for 10 years, for 5 years. When you see that this person is not into soul winning, regard the person as an agent of a curse. And there are some people who are cursed. Who want to draw you into the case. And you have followed them long enough. After this camp, you must never company with non-soul winners. They are in the same category with fornicators and pornographers and thieves and idolaters. Because for us, this vision is a carrier of a blessing. This vision is a carrier of a blessing. You, you, when your friend is not interested in, or maybe you start week one, week two, week three, then week four, you call, oh, Stella, are you coming? Oh, it's, it's this thing, this thing, this thing, this thing, this thing. As soon as you begin to hear such comments, note that you, have, you, you are encountering someone who is an agent a blocker of your blessing. May you find people who are excited about soul winning. And you will find one. I said you will find one. In this church, let us allow the non-soul winners to be in their own colony and, and, and share their cases among themselves. But you and I, who want blessings in our lives, will find the people who are excited about soul winning. It's a good policy. It's a good policy. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you that they are here. There are some people here who will never ever be a part of this vision. Never. Note them. Yes. Paul tells us to mark and avoid them. Yes. You are going to surround yourself with people who are soul winners because a blessing is in it. A blessing is in it. 
young guys, young, 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 young guys. This is a channel of your anointing. Yes. An anointing you never experienced will come upon your life. I say an anointing you never experienced. There are some anointings you don't get by sitting in church. No way. There are some anointings that don't come by laying on of hands. There are some anointings that do not come by reading scriptures on a board in church. There are some anointings that only come when you go out. I said when you go out. When Jesus sent the disciples in twos and they went out there. The Bible says the demons were subject to them. May every devil who is a carrier or an agent of a curse be subject to you as you step out. Receive it now. So young guys, I'm saying among your own type, there will be some of you who will not be interested. Yes. Yes. There are some girls here who are excited jumping, receiving, when they go out and they see a boy. But you must find people. You will find them. May you find your soul winning partner. I said, may you find your soul winning partner. Yes. I said, may you find your soul winning partner. Even the games we'll play will be monthly games. At the end of the month, we'll list our souls. We'll list the souls. You got four. You got three. You got six. You won. I said you won. You are the next winner of that soul winning competition. Receive it at the back. Yes. A blessing is in it. I said a blessing is in it. You become wise. You become glorious. That is beauty. Beauty comes upon your life. Yes. Doors that were shut to you will be open. How, how else are you going to be wise? How else are you going to be wise? You don't become wise by going to the university. Hello? When you go to a university, you only get degrees. A lot of professors are fools. Wisdom is not found in a university. Wisdom is found only in God. He's the source of wisdom. And he has already told us in Daniel 12 that he that winneth souls is wise. That the, the wise shall shine as stars. So don't think that because you are an A plus student. How do you say it? Is it A plus or A? A plus. You may get A plus in school and not know what to do with your life. You may get A plus in school and all you did in the school was to donate. I was going to say something. I just remembered I'm in church. Sorry, I, 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 I forgot I was in church. I was going to say something. Receive the wisdom that comes from soul winning. Look, I'm telling you, I'm saying to you that if you are here going to school, you, you are not there for wisdom. Wisdom doesn't come from attending Harvard. When you win souls, when you win souls, you become wise. You become wise. That's why I said, I saw it clearly. There was a young boy who was advising his teacher in school. Your teacher will teach. What are, what are the subjects you study? Biochemistry, anatomy, organic chemistry, mathematics, health science. Okay. They will teach you health science. But you will teach them the wisdom of God. Yeah. Receive that blessing in the name of Jesus. Let's, let's go back. Let's go back to Anna. Sit down. Take your notes. Soul winning 
Number five is the only job that is not in vain. First Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast and movable. Are you going to be moved? No. Are you going to be moved? No. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Yes. That is what we are looking for. When we say something is in vain, it means it did not yield the desired outcome. It was a waste of time. And many of us, if we had time to give you a microphone, you will share testimonies of useless things you chased. <laughs> you got it only to discover that it was useless. And I, I, I can understand why you chased those vain things because you had not been presented with the real. The real. Yes. You had not been presented with the real. But after this camp, you have no excuse. You have no excuse. You are going to spend your life chasing things that are valuable and things that give you the desired result. The Bible itself says that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. That is when you, when at 4 p.m. on Saturday, you leave your house to go to the street corner to win souls. Even if you don't get any souls, you went. I said you did what? Yeah, you went. Clap your hands. You can clap your hands. Feel free. There are many things we labor for that are useless. You chase and chase and chase. You get it and you realize that. Is that it? Is that all? You get the house you are looking for. You drive the car you desire. A lot of guys have got dreams of driving certain cars. And they will move heaven and earth to drive it, even if they have to borrow money to buy it. You know, soul winning delivers wisdom. Wisdom. You become sensible. When you win souls, you become sensible. Things people cannot see through, you see through. Things people fall for. Because of soul winning. You see, that's what Bishop said. Imagine a girl who sits down with someone, counsels the person, shares Christ with the person, and leads the person to Christ. That girl is different from the other girl who cannot do such a thing. Yes. That girl is special. When you sit down, you can clap for that girl if you know one. Or that boy. You, you, you must have something in you. You must have something in you to be able to sit down with someone. It is not a small thing to lead someone to Christ. I know people who met, you know, souls and just by the look in the eyes of the souls, they forgot the scriptures they were going to use. I'm telling you, you can meet a certain type of soul and forget the scriptures. And some of you, you don't even have the scriptures. So you, I, I don't even know what you say. You just ask the person for direction. <laughs> yeah. The person you are witnessing to, you'll be so confused that you ask the person to, 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 to show you the way to, to his house. Bad, bad, bad. I said bad, 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 bad. The sisters here are going to become sisters with scriptures. That is the wisdom. 
in winning a soul. Because, you see, when you are going to win a soul, you, you can't rehearse it in your room. Do you see the point? Like you pull a chair, you sit down. And somebody comes to sit down as a soul. And you greet the person, good afternoon. My name is Elsie from Milwaukee. And uh, uh, what do they say? Uh, I, I want to talk to you about Christ. And uh, you start with your first scripture. And your second scripture. It's not like that. There's nobody you meet in town who will pull a chair and sit down. <laughs> if any sister who successfully brings a soul to church, witnesses to a soul, and brings the soul to church, it's a carrier of a type of wisdom. I said it's a carrier of a type of wisdom. And may you be that type of sister. May you be that type of brother. It builds you up. It builds you up. It builds you up. That is the reason why the Bible says that this one is called labor in the Lord. Labor in the Lord. You go, you try, you fail. You try again. You fail. You try again. Till you become good at it. Soul winning is a skill. And the hallmark of that skill is not being allowed to stop. Pressing on, being persistent. Yeah, that is the skill. You can come home on Saturday evening angry and depressed. Through soul winning. But the following Saturday, you must go again. I said you must go again. You must go again. And we see this this scripture in 1 Corinthians 15 58 says that that work you are doing will not be in vain. You see, it's not just that it's going to give you a beloved or give you money, but it, it, it builds you. And I remember clearly how Bishop put it a sister who can sit down with someone. And counsel the person and bring the person to Christ must have something in her that is not ordinary. May that something be found in every brother, every sister here. I said, may it be found in every brother and every sister here. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. Yes. It's not a small thing. To overcome a face. A face. So when you have done that for a while, it even gives you, the sister or the brother, a certain boldness. A certain boldness. Not arrogance, but confidence. I know people who through soul winning have been able to pass interviews. Oh yes. Interviews. He sat before a panel and the normal girl will come out of was be shaking. But she is calm because she has she has already been schooled. She has already gone through the art of engaging people to talk to them. That's why 2 Peter 1 8 says, if these things be in you, they will make you. If these things are in you. They will make you. The emptiness in your life ends in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yes. Even for someone to see you and like you, it's not be because of the type of face you, you have. There is something in you that can be put there, not by going to the university, but by using the word of God. And as you continue using the word of God, you, 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 you you look for a scripture and you don't even find it. When you come back home, you use your concordance and you look up that verse. When you find it, it becomes a tool in your box. And if these things are in you, they will make you. The emptiness that has characterized your life ends now in Jesus' name. You cannot have a life where you are all that is that exists 
about you is your hair and your dress. Your looks. Everything is about how you look. But when you open your mouth to speak, there must be a wow factor. I said, when you open your mouth and you speak, there must be a wow. 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 What type of girl is this? What type of boy is this? You may be 16 years old, but when you speak, you speak with the wisdom of a 40 year old. You may be 20 years old, but when you speak, you speak with the wisdom of a 50 year old. The word of God itself delivers wisdom. That is why the one who wins souls is wise because it's not as simple as just winning a soul. There are things you do. You counsel, you advise, you are, you are patient, you keep pressing. All these things make you a wise person. Receive wisdom for your life. I said receive wisdom for your life. And turn your Bibles, please. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. What you are going to use to overcome. The challenges of your life. The wisdom. Verse 14. There was a little city. Are you there? Ecclesiastes 9 verse 14. Ask your neighbor, have you found it? Do you know where Ecclesiastes is? Help your neighbor to find it. You are going to be a sister of the word. I said a sister of the word. There's nothing wrong with looking beautiful and looking gorgeous. But when you open your mouth, we must hear wisdom and not stupidity. There was a little city. A sister of the word. Look around you and see if you find a sister of the word. Charlie, that girl, you know the scriptures. Oh, she's, she's wild. Yeah. She knows where to find scriptures. She knows where to find that verse in Mark. She knows where to find that verse in Ecclesiastes. She knows where to find that verse in the... In, Deuteronomy. Not that that sister, she knows where to find her in town. She knows where to find her. Ask anybody, are you the one? You will know better things than looking for hair and makeup. And few men within it, there was a little city, and few men within it. And there came a great king against it. And besieged it. And built great bulwarks against it. Now, there was found in it a poor, wise man. And he by, by, by what? Not, not wisdom. What, what word is there? He by, he by, there is a type of wisdom that is called his wisdom. Her wisdom. Yes. If you don't have it, you don't have it. What type of wisdom is in you? He by, his wisdom. Not God's wisdom. Not the pastor's wisdom. Not the prophet's wisdom. When you use the word of God to minister to souls, you develop wisdom that becomes your wisdom. Amen. Your wisdom. And that wisdom is available to everybody here. He, by his wisdom, delivered the city. Yet, no man remembered that same poor man. But we don't care who does not remember you. What matters is that God takes note of us as the stars in heaven. I said we don't care which sister or brother not, uh, notices us. Do you care who remembers you? 
the work we are doing is God's work. I said, the work we are doing is God's work. If somebody notices what you are doing and claps for you, it's an extra. It's bonus. We don't care who sees us and who remembers us. We are using the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. But the point you need to note is that he, by his wisdom, delivered the city. That is, there is no problem. There is no problem in your life that doesn't have the appropriate wisdom to neutralize it. Yes. I mean, this, this situation was an impossible situation. An enemy comes and builds walls. Besieges your city. Nobody goes in, nobody comes out. But there was a man. He was poor. That is why soul winning is a great because it doesn't require money. No, 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 no. It doesn't require money. I mean, you crossing the road to win a soul. Or you want to travel to Zambia before you can win a soul. You want to travel to Africa? No. Oswald J. Smith says, if you cannot cross the road to win a soul, you will not have the privilege of crossing the ocean to win a soul. Yes. The first crossing is your road. Ask your neighbor, do you have a road around you? A road. Yes. You, are, you want to go to Zambia. To do what? Maybe if you go, you won't come back. You go and dance with the natives. <laughs> he by his wisdom. He by his wisdom. When you win souls, you become wise. And with that wisdom, you go on a rampage. Devastating the things that have disturbed your life, your family. And, and you, you become almost like Superman in your family. Yes. That's why many of us here, our fathers, our relatives, when they see us in our hearts, they bow. Oh, yes. They bow. As young as you are, they will call you for advice. Not because of the school you went to. No. They also went to school. They are better educated than you. But there is something about the word of God. There is something about the wisdom of God. That by this camp, you are, you are also be, becoming a recipient. You are, you, you, are, you are receiving that wisdom for your life. He by his wisdom. When you win souls, you don't become wise for me. You don't become wise for your pastor. He that is wise is wise for himself. He by his wisdom. May there be no situation in your life you cannot overcome by the wisdom that is delivered to you as a soul winner. Yes. And whatever has encompassed you, whatever wall has limited your life. As we step into vision 10,000, you are going to become triumphant. You are going to overcome the limitations. Our Father has given into, has put into our hands the, 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 the weapons we need to fight the battles we must fight. After this camp, you will be a surprise to the enemy. You will be a surprise to your friends. They will wonder what has become of you. May soul winning transform you. May, may soul winning transform you. May vision 10,000 make you another person. Don't forget, I said, if these things be in you. You see, that is what soul winning does. It builds something in you. That you don't get by attending an Ivy League school. It builds faith. Knowledge. Confidence, spirituality. Say, if these things be in you, they will make you. One of these days, people will make a comment. You will hear somebody say that you are different. I said, You are different. They will ask, What has come over you? What is happening to you? And you will just smile 
Because you know that you cannot even explain to them what has happened to you. Let me tell you, that is why the devil will do everything to prevent us from winning souls. He will not stop you from coming to church. He may not even stop you from praying. He may not even stop you from reading your Bible. But when you become a soul winner, you see, uh, once again, what Bishop said, he said, someone who can talk to a person, counsel the person, and bring the person to Christ and to church is no ordinary person anymore. You will not be ordinary after this camp. I said you will not be ordinary after this camp. I said you will not be ordinary after this camp. Something about you is changing. The beauty, the glory soul winning delivers to you is changing your life. How your mind works is changing. I said how your mind works. If you were impatient because of soul winning, you, you must learn patience. You must learn patience. Because that, that new convert will not do things the way you want things to be done. Yes. You will test your patience. She will test your spirituality. Yeah. She will do things that will make you want to slap the person. If you are a man, slap and see. Yeah. It will build something in you. Maybe that is what you need to have a successful marriage. That you cannot use your husband as a, as a, as a what do you call it? Testing microphone. <laughs> so winning prepares you before you go and meet that woman or meet that man. May you be converted and transformed. If these things be in you, they make you, they make you. Um, listen, by, by, you see, when you become a soul winner, it begins your journey in ministry. Yeah, you just soul winning, follow up, praying for the soul, helping the person. As, before you know it, you are a shepherd in church. Wow. And you continue winning souls and so, soul winning, soul winning. Before you know it, you are a pastor. Amen. Yeah. You are a pastor. Amen. And a pastor is a different person. When you see a pastor standing somewhere, you are looking at a special type of person. Yeah, a pastor is not an ordinary person. He may not have gone to the university, but the grace of God that rests on his life makes the person different from the ordinary man. And so winning begins that journey. You are being transformed. I said you are being transformed. May nothing in you destroy the soul winning vision. Don't. Tell your neighbor, do not destroy this one. I sense greatly that God is going to, you see, God wants to use this to transform our lives. Yeah, because you see, a lot of the curses that, is going, that are going to come into our lives or that are already there, they work based on predictability. Yeah. They know how you behave. I mean, the curse has already been, been, been rolled in front of you. And they know that this guy the idiot he is will walk that path clearly. Yeah. A lot of the cases are, are just ready-made pathways. Ready-made pathways. They come into your life to railroad you. Railroad you along a certain path. But ministry takes you away. Amen. So you are no more predictable. You are no more predictable. They know you as a guy who cannot stand beautiful girls. But soul winning changes you. Hey, because you, you cannot be sleeping with girls and be a soul winner. Because the average girl you will meet in town is beautiful. And you, you don't have any <laughs> self-control. No. So soul winning builds self-control in you as a man. And makes you no more predictable. A lot of the things that destroy us, let me tell you, is because they know your type. That this person, if you press this button, she'll be very angry and start insulting. <laughs> yeah. They know you. That if you do this, you, you watch her. You watch how she behave. You, watch, you, you say this to her. You see that suddenly she'll remove her dress and begin to... If you like, no, if you like, if you like, buy chocolates for her. 
You, you watch what will happen. You, you buy chocolate and write a letter to her. You will get to sleep with her tonight. But when you become a soul winner, you become unpredictable. We cannot use chocolate to find you anymore. Yes. It's like the wind. The wind. It blows where it listens. Nobody will sit down and plan that they can get to destroy you this way. Yeah. There are some of you guys, you, you know yourself, if you see Indian hemp, you can't control yourself. There are some of you here. Yeah. You've been on drugs. But there's a power in the, in, the, in, in, the, in, the, in the life of a soul winner that is stronger and bigger than drugs and, and alcohol and women and men. It changes you. It makes you different. That you are almost unrecognizable. You yourself, sometimes you just sit down and you shake your head. Say, hey, me, pa, me. Hey, me. It's today, me, pa, I'm sitting with a nice girl. And we are having a normal chat. Four years ago, by this time, Kelly, Kelly, round three. But look at you today, what the Lord has done. A former fornicator. You are now a pastor. A former drunkard. You are now under the influence of the Holy Ghost. Receive that testimony for your life. Receive that testimony for your life. It will always happen. It, you see, let me, anyone here who has, you know, things... In you, people can just predict how your life will be. They can tell, this girl is like that. This girl is like that. You watch her. As she's going to university, she won't finish. And truly, second year, you are out. You see that girl. You watch her. As she's moving with this boy, the boy will sleep with her. And it will happen. You see that boy. You watch her. As he's there, you hear that they say a, 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 a phone is lost. And truly, as we are there, say, somebody's looking for his phone. Say, I told you, that guy is a thief. But if any man be in Christ and it's a soul winner, he's a new creation, all things are passed away. Anybody who has been known as a certain type of bad, 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 bad person, soul winning is changing you because of what we call your wisdom. Your wisdom. Better develop your wisdom. I said, better develop. Look, as we are all here, she has her wisdom. He has his wisdom. The church has his wisdom. But you too, what is your wisdom? What type of wisdom do you have? But when you are a soul winner, you use the Bible, you pray, you counsel. A wisdom that is not your type comes upon you. And when people see you, they just wonder, ah, is this not the girl who was like that? Is this not the girl? Like some of you, by this time, even at this camp, I mean, you are among nice guys like this. Some of you, but we came on, on Tuesday. Was it Tuesday or Wednesday? Tuesday. Wednesday. Today is Wednesday. Today is Thursday. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Some of you, by this time, you have done four times in the toilet, one in your room, one behind the car. But look at you, neat and normal and proper and clean. May that testimony rest on you perpetually. Yes. yes. So through this vision 10,000, pastors will come out. Pastors. Pastors will come out. Missionaries will come out. When I say missionaries, I mean people who will fly on an airplane and travel to distant lands. We will see you in Asia, in Africa, in South America. Is it possible? How will it happen? Because when you had the chance to cross the streets, you cross it. So it's now time to cross the ocean. You cross the ocean. Receive it in Jesus' name. Clap your hands for Jesus. And let's... Sit down. 
Wow. I feel blessed. I said, I feel blessed. We are looking at soul winning. Ask your neighbor, are you a soul winner? What the person say? Oh, I didn't hear you. Yep. Let's go back to that scripture. Daniel 12. Verse 3. Congratulate the nearest star around you. The nearest star. Alpha Centauri. The nearest star. And they, are you there? Verse 3. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars for two weeks. Sorry. As the stars for a month. As the stars for? For what? For what? I can't hear you. Receive an eternal brightness that never goes dim. In the name of Jesus. Are we not surrounded by so-called stars who shine for two years and we cannot find them? Where is Michael Jackson? The stars of the sisters, we can't find them today. But the one, go back, let me show you. You see, what you... What we are doing, vision 10,000, is not, is not an earthly vision. It is beyond the earth. They that be wise. And I'm sure you know who a wise person is. Hello? Who is that wise person? Yes. Proverbs 11.30. He that winneth souls is wise. And now, they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. It means that we can no longer hide your brightness. You cannot even hide your beauty. You cannot hide your blessings. Those who win souls, the more you try to hide your blessings, the more they come out for all to see. It's called the brightness of the firmament. That people just stand and, and admire in amazement. Look at the firmament. Look at this brother. The shame that characterized your previous life. That shame melts away. The, the, look, a day will come. People must be told a story before they even remember the shame that was in your past. The glory of tomorrow will eclipse the shame. I said the shame. Whatever you did that introduced shame in your life. Some of you are known in your area for only bad things, even in church. I said, even in church. You have managed to bring it to church. But that era has changed. I said, that era has changed. This camp marks the beginning of your brightness. Receive it as a testimony you are living here with. It's a testimony. It is a testimony. It is a testimony. Any inglorious part of your life is moving away. And the glory of God is taking over your life. The beauty of God is taking over your life. Yes, whatever you did that, make you, that made you uh, uh, an, an object of mockery. It ends. It ends. And as Bishop said today, even some of you, your depression will lift. I said your depression. When I say your depression, make no mistake. I'm not addressing only sisters. 
They are men. They are men. It's a man. But the face is crumpled. Never happy. Grumbling. Moody. I said moody. When we are around you, we must develop resistance. Otherwise, you will affect us with your mood. It is changing. I'm talking about a brightness that is as the firmament. I said a brightness that is like the firmament. May it be a part of your story in Jesus' name. That is your portion. When you win souls, you shine. You shine, not like a candle. Not like a bulb. There are many types of lights. Yours will be the type that is in the sky. I said, yours. Is there anybody who believes the word of God? I am telling you confidently that soul winning, this is the camp. That, that, that came to change your entire life. Have we not been in church all these years? Have we not been reading our Bible all these years? But we are introducing the wonder of soul winning. I said, we are introducing the wonder of soul winning. And you watch it. Begin, expect testimonies. Expect people to be, to be making comments. Expect people to be saying things about, wow, you've changed. What is this about you? What's happening to you? They'll be whispering. The brother has changed. The sister has changed. When you speak, you exude wisdom. I said you exude wisdom. I said you exude wisdom. That is the story of your life as you are about to leave this camp. Wisdom through soul winning. And we are saying that it makes you shine. Not like a bulb in a corner somewhere there. Yeah. This is, the word is clear. Brightness of the do you need a magnifying glass to see the brightness of the firmament? Do you need to wear glasses to see the brightness of the firmament? The same way people effortlessly notice the brightness of the firmament is the same way people will effortlessly notice the beauty of your church, the blessing upon your family. The grace of God upon your life through soul winning. Receive it as your personal testimony. Personal testimony. You don't share it with anybody. It is for you. Receive it now. The brightness. They that be wise. Yeah. I want to encourage you. Don't feel too bad. That you couldn't go to the university. Okay. Okay. Or you misbehaved and you were sacked. Soul winning and the ministry. So when we say soul winning, vision 10,000, it's, it's, it's just it's ministry. Yeah, ministry. Anybody who identifies with this vision becomes a pastor instantly. <laughs> And that begins your journey of great honor. That is the brightness of the firmament. Honor that could not be found in your family will be bestowed on you. When I say honor, I mean people see you and they respect you. Yeah. The Bible says in Hebrews 5, for nobody decides to take. See, there are many things you can take and put on yourself. You can go to town. If you have money, you can take a wig and put it on your head. I've seen many beautiful wigs here. Very nice wigs. Very beautiful. There is a certain type of honor. You can, you can buy and put it on your head. Even me, I can change my title from a master. Next week, you will call me doctor. Oh, yes. Oh, no, I, I don't want it. I don't want it. But I, there are places I can, e I can send an email and buy a degree. It will be delivered by DHL on Monday. There are many types of honor you can take and put on yourself. I know women who, have not, who are not married. They wear wedding rings. 
Because marriage is not a ring. You can wear it, but it's not on you. But the Bible says there is one honor. You cannot buy it and wear it. It cannot be emailed to you. It is the honor of doing the work of God. He said, the Bible says that this honor, no man, no man, no sister, no brother, you cannot take that honor. It is put on you. The angels, the power of God, the presence of God, it is conferred on you. Receive that honor. Receive it. Receive it. I mean, think of it. When, 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 when you are made a part of this vision, it means honor is being bestowed on you. That's why I asked the question that you think where, apart from church, that you will call 20 people for a meeting. You just, you just post a note or a message on WhatsApp. And tomorrow evening, people are in a room waiting for you. Clap your hands for the ministry. Now, it is this honor. Nobody can take it. Up and just, you, you cannot put it on yourself. It is God who places it on you. When you see the beauty of, of, of ministry and you pursue it, you shine. The, this honor is what is called the brightness of the firmament. But you can't hide it. You can't hide it. Many times when I'm moving in town, I, I get embarrassed. Oh, pastor, you look like somebody I saw on a billboard. Are you the one? And I smile. You will be on posters. The next time we are on Facebook, we will see your poster advertising your crusade. And you will pose like this. And they will write under it, Evangelist Bernard Ateman. Receive it now! It's honor. Honor. Honor God puts on you. I want you from today to see the work of God. Winning of souls. Not as something which is a disturbance. But it is, it is, it is a privilege. A privilege. I mean, think about it. Who in your family is great? Who in your family has any proper marriage? Mention how many sisters you have. Your cousins. Who have been married for over 20 years. Most of them are sitting in the house divorces. Some have got two children with four fathers. One boy. We can't find the father. But that is a different story from your story. Because the blessing and the honor God will place on you will not be like the story of the drug addicts in your house. The drunkards in your house. No man takes this honor upon himself. We are living here. Go back to Daniel 12 and verse 3. You are going to shine. I said you are going to shine. Any part of your life that was dim. 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 Dark. Black darkness. A light is approaching. That's why I said arise and shine. Because, 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 because. Your light. Your light. Your light. Not this LED bulb. Not that incandescent bulb. Your light is the light of the firmament that is coming from soul winning. Arise and shine on Saturdays because your evangelism light has come. And they that turn Three people. Sorry. Two people. To, uh, sorry, how many? They, oh sorry. They that turn four people to righteousness. How many? many. How many? Many. many? many. What is many? Plenty. Plenty. One hundred. Five hundred. Sixty-eight. One twenty. May you be called the father of a thousand sheep. 
the mother of 2,000 sheep. Receive it as your testimony. It's your testimony. It's your testimony. It's your testimony. Yes. And that blessing is bestowed on you not for two weeks, not for three months, not for one year. I thank God that by his mercy, I got born again 32 years ago. I said 32 years ago. By his grace and his mercy, I am still standing in the church. And I am believing God that I will die in the church. May it be your story. But even after you are dead, may there be a place for you in eternity. I said a place in eternity that you will earn not because you went to a university. Not because you were a rich man. But because you won souls. I beg you. Commit your life. Even pastors. Pastors. You've been a pastor for 12 years. 18 years. 15 years. I'm telling you that there is ministry and there's ministry. Wow. It's not just two by four you struggling, you are struggling in your corner there. There's ministry. Step out. Amen. Watch our father closely. Watch him closely. I don't know what you mean when you say you are following someone. But you are following how he preaches. There's something bigger than that. Amen. Watch the person carefully. You cannot do ministry in a room. Step out. And you will see that you are a carrier of graces you never knew you carried. I said you will discover that you are a carrier of graces and anointings that you never imagined you carried. Yes. Step out. There is a new life. I said your light has come. And this light is not for three weeks. So I am praying. Look, when I got born again, I was 16 years. I don't know how old you are, but may you be 80 years and still hold the microphone. I said, may you be holding a microphone. That's why some of you must, must respect your parents who are here as lady pastors. Yes, she gave birth to you and is still in church. When you get pregnant twice, you may easily retire. But there is something God is going to place with, within you. That will make you unstoppable. I said that will make you unstoppable. Because this work is not for three years. Or six months. Or two weeks. What is the duration? When does it end? Ever and ever and ever and ever. May the glory that will come upon you. Be an everlasting glory. That's what God wants you to do. And, and, and be ready. So when you leave here, that's why we read Isaiah 65. Wow. Because um, it is important for you to know that something that is a carrier of your blessing can be destroyed. I mean, the glass bowl can actually be dropped and crushed. So as you leave here, look out for the slightest movement around you. Of opposition. Look out for it. Don't let it surprise you. When you meet any opposition. Trying to stop you from being. And let me see. Saturday. This four o'clock Saturday. Is a basic requirement. We are going beyond Saturday. What are you talking about? You will win souls on Tuesday. You will win souls on Wednesday. When you were chasing that girl, were you talking to her only on Saturday at 4 o'clock? You will, you will shine. You see, this is where God, you see, and they that turn many to righteousness. So, expect nothing less than 200 people. Whose existence in the kingdom of God will be directly attributable to you. I hear someone one day sharing a testimony of how he met you. He met you. 
Isn't that a beautiful story? Yes. I met Brother Dan. I met Brother Alex. I met... When, when, when Bishop is talking about this lady, uh, Sister Betty, the lady who helped him to... I um, showed him how to have his quiet time, took him to church. I thank God for such sweet sisters. Wow. Wow. Because some of you sisters... If a brother like Bishop falls into your hand, I mean, a young guy like that, Charlie, you will deploy all your abilities. But look at it. Turning many to what? Righteousness. Righteousness. Auntie Betty, Sister Betty, turned Bishop to what? Righteousness. I'm asking you, my brother, if a beautiful girl falls into your hands, what will you do to her? Will you teach her how to have a quiet time? Or you will teach her how to scream? Oh, may it be that a nice girl came within your radar and you taught her how to be a pastor. How to preach. How to win souls. Amen. Some of you are very dangerous. No, you are very dangerous. Every sister here must have the vision to be addressed or referred to with the same accolades that I used to talk about Sister Betty. Every sister here. Because some sisters are very dangerous. Hey, 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 You will invite him to your house for Bible discussion. But it's changing. Everybody here is being anointed to turn people to righteousness. Amen. We are unbelievers who turn many to unrighteousness. They're not going to teach someone how to fornicate, how to sin, how to watch pornography. How to, no, when, when, when a young guy comes into your life, you will not teach him how to have sex. You will teach him how to read his Bible. Brothers, are you here? Yes, you are, look, you, you will not, enc- it, it is very, very unlikely that you are going to meet an ugly girl. I've not seen one around. I mean, I've seen a few girls with bad, bad hairstyles, but generally. <laughs> bad, 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 bad. But generally, every sister is nice. What will you do when a beauty queen comes into your life? Can you control yourself? May you turn many to righteousness. Clap your hands for Jesus. You can't handle it when a nice girl comes into your your 18. No. It's over. I said it's over. From now on, people will refer to you as the one who taught them how to serve God. You take people on outreach. You, they will see you with a nice girl and they will ask, is she your beloved? Say, no, I'm not into such things. I'm into soul winning. Yeah, this is my disciple. So this is my disciple. Hey, hey. May you have beautiful disciples. Handsome disciples. Receive it now. It cannot be. Anybody who is beautiful must be flawed. It's changing. That testimony is gone. It's over. I said it is over. You will teach people how to go to church. Oh yes. David had such friends who taught him how to go to church. They said let us go to church. Yes. 
you will teach people how to have quiet time with different translations. You will teach people how to use Dick's Bible. I'm talking about turning people to righteousness. That is, the person was already headed for unrighteousness. Was living unrighteously. But the person fell into your hands. Hey! Hey! The person fell into your hands. And with dexterity, you turned the person towards righteousness. May pastors come out of you. May shepherds come out of you. May soul winners come out of you. May God lovers come out of you. In the name of Jesus. That is what you are. That's the testimony. When we talk about lighthouse, not America, we are. Look, I, I mean it. Everybody here, whether you are a shepherd or no shepherd, you are going to become righteous. You are going to become a teacher of soul winning. Yes, whatever you are, you are, you, you are going to be a shepherd yourself. Amen. You'll be a shepherd. Amen. You will teach people to pray. Amen. How to have their quiet time. Amen. How to serve God. Amen. Is there anybody who is going to train people how to, on, how to be shepherds? How to have their quiet time? May the Lord help you to shine forever by turning people to righteousness. Amen. Clap your hands for Jesus and you may be seated. Wow. We are going to watch a documentary. Are you ready? So let's turn off the lights.